<laughs> this is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast, where CEOs, C-suite executives, and senior leaders share their advice. It's six questions in nine minutes because the best leaders know how to share their ideas concisely and quickly. Let's jump right in. In a few sentences, please tell me who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Miles Ward. I'm CTO at Sada Systems. Uh, that means I help people with public cloud. I worked at Google and AWS leading solutions architecture teams to help businesses take advantage of public cloud. Uh, I turned off Twitter one time and then turned it back on. Uh, <laughs> I've made bad choices with computers for a long time. <laughs> That's really funny. Well, we've all done that. So I'm, I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. And I think you really represent kind of the first uh, CTO. So it'll be, be interesting to kind of hear kind of from the, yeah, the technology people, what they think about people, right? Yeah. Um, so with that being said, what's the best thing about leading people from your perspective? Sure. I, I, I've led several teams at my startup, at, at, a, at a big corporation, at tiny, tiny businesses. And I think the best thing about leading people is, is really being able to learn together with others. I think learning is a social endeavor and, and we're all trying to take on experiments, but then need mentors and coaches and people to help us think through, are we, are we doing that experiment the right way? Have we, have we captured everything that we can learn out of it? And that's, that's a team sport. We have to do that together. So I enjoy, uh, I enjoy leading people because I can encourage that kind of environment and context for them all to work in. And it feels more creative and more fun rather than feeling like it's a big grind. I mean, it's a job, but that's what most of our time is spent on. So it should be fun. I love that. I've never actually heard of learning described as a group sport sort of idea. And I love that. I think that that's true. I think as, again, as you learn and you're able to teach it to those around you, you, you learn it even more. So what better than to have them in the room with you when you're doing it all together? That's right. That's right. That's I mean, great idea. My, my trick was always in college, if I had to really study for a thing, I had to teach it to somebody else, right? Mm. Like no better way to know that you actually have it un, under control that you can complete sentences in front of other people on the subject. So <laughs> uh, that was, but, you know, if you extrapolate that into big groups, if we're all teaching each other something and learning something, I think that moves us a lot farther faster. Love it. I often hear from other people that, from other leaders in particular, that business would be great if it weren't for that pesky people part. <laughs> I'm curious, especially from the technology person, what's your yeah. thoughts about that? Uh, humans have a very strange API. They like <laughs> bathrooms, I don't understand what that's about. Exactly. Yeah, they cry a lot. <laughs> yeah. They move? Who moves? Right? So I, I, I don't think that that's true. I think businesses are groups of people and yeah very little else i think what people mostly experience frustration with i know i certainly have is not the people but the policy and procedure and rules and structure that you you're required to adhere or comply to right mm -hmm. I, I know most of the way that i lead and the way that i interact with others is always at the boundaries and the outer edges of those rules and structures right like do you need to be in the office from nine to five well i mean policy says you do, but I, I, what I really want is you just get your job done. So yeah. as long as I have the ability to manage to actual expectations to what I really want you to be able to do, what I think you're capable of and what's beyond capable of, that that kind of working environment is it's just more fun. Um, I, and I know that people who are in the role of people management, you know, myself included, struggle all the time with how that, you know, engendering that kind of experience complies with the rectangular structures that a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's true, but I like it. You're bu you're bumping up against those boundaries all the time and really pushing them to their furthest furthest edges, yeah. um, which I think is really important again as leaders to to be able to do that again to challenge the status quo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What other successful business leaders like yourself should be on the podcast? I'm curious, who should we be listening to? Who's got a great voice out there right now? Sure, there's a. Um, there's an incredible engineering leader. His name's Will Larson. He's written a book called uh, An Elegant Puzzle that describes his experiences at Stripe uh, and a couple of other big technology companies building working engineering teams. I think his insights are fascinating. Um, there's, I, I'm also a huge fan of charity majors. 
She, um, she's an engineering owner uh, and founder for a company called Honeycomb IO and writes a lot about the manager versus individual contributor balance and how confusing that is for people. Um, uh, you know, I, I also think a super interesting person to talk to uh, is Harper Reed out of Chicago. He was founder for a company um, that got sold to PayPal. He was also the CTO for the Obama campaign in 2012. Um, wow. Uh, very, very intelligent guy, and um, he will be the strangest looking person with the most tattoos you have on this podcast. <laughs> by far. Uh, so you, you'll have fun with all three. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think, again, you know, the more eclectic the, the you know, the guests, the, the more eclectic the audience can relate, you know, it's like, that's right. bring the two strange together, right? Because <laughs> I know that describes me. What piece of advice about communication would you give to other leaders? Sure. Um, I'm fairly certain that I learned everything that I needed to know about communications, despite the fact that I have a Bachelor of Science in Rhetoric and Media Studies, which is like a BS degree in BS. Uh, <laughs> I'm fairly certain that I learned everything in show and tell in kindergarten. Like, yeah. you, you have to like show them and then you have to tell it to them. <laughs> and and if, if they're not smiling, then you, you screwed up somehow. Yeah, do it again. <laughs> so there... I think we belabor and create complexity and add a bunch of stress to people who are communicators mm -hmm. uh, and, and in these sort of high profile visible roles. A lot of that goes back to the kind of rule structures and the things that they're protecting, but personality is the API for loyalty. It is like, if you do not, if you're not a human, I don't trust you. Yeah. I, there's no way for me to build a relationship with you. So right. when you get an executive that's saying exactly what's on the teleprompter and there's no there there it makes it really stop hard. reading the script stop <laughs> reading the script <laughs> doesn't work right like i wouldn't trust somebody like that at the grocery store I, yeah. you know if, if my wife interacted with me by like reading off of a teleprompter over our like dinner i would be like you're strange and something's gone medically wrong with you so <laughs> it, it, it's that you know talk, talk like you talk to people because it turns out other people are actually people <laughs> wow very sound practical <laughs> fundamental <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, doesn't seem like it's that but see that but you're but you're hitting the point here which it is it's it's and it's practical common sense things that again we learned very young and if we bring those forward to today that our connections with with each other will have extra, you know um, exponential results right mm -hmm. and I think at the end of the day that's what leadership's all about is you know, helping us all get to this other place together safely, yeah. right? Tell us about your favorite boss or teacher. Who's really influenced you? Sure, I um, I took a lot of uh, uh, I took a lot of the way that I like to manage and lead from one of my earlier bosses. He's also a teacher. He is a wrestling coach at the high school that I went to, even though I never wrestled. Um, his name's uh, Mike Hanchett. He runs a company called Research Technologies. It's like 11 weirdos in a pile building <laughs> lasers for <laughs> to make sure that the planes fly straight. It's like, wow. the, and they, they have a bunch of other sort of engineering projects. They put the accelerometer that's on the space station and, you know, nerdy shit. Yeah. So those folks uh, and his team, you know, you, you know, as a manager and as a, you know, a leader and a business person, you have these books, right? And you're trying to make the spreadsheet work out and everybody's got to get paid and, and, you know, business is business. But at the same time, there's just no reason that you can't interact with each other as people and have a good time and be transparent and direct about what's stressful or what's, what's the challenges are. We definitely had all nighters. We had crazy months where we were building breakneck. I, you know, I did everything under the sun in that job from backing up the servers to drawing the new logos to talking to customer service. So, uh, you know, he gave people a lot of room and yeah. a lot of rope. And, and the result was that they could, find their most creative way to solving our problems. And, uh, you know, that little team got more done <laughs> than much larger teams, let's put it that way. Uh, that's amazing. I, you know, you see that time and time again. And I think, again, it's the leader, can they bring and assemble that team together and really, you know, inspire them? Um, or does that leader like take it and just kind of break it all apart, right? I mean, you've seen that before too. It's like, 
a leader can take a great team and make it terrible, you know, make it terrible, or they can take a, you know, poor performing team and make it great. It's like the leader really does have an impact there. So oh, yeah. I think that makes a, a huge difference. Well, thank you so much for being on Miles. I really appreciate it. How can people find you if they want to reach out and say hi or learn more? Super easy. I'm on LinkedIn. It's just Miles Ward, M-I-L-E-S-W-A-R-D. On Twitter, it's Miles Ward, that's M-I-L-E-S-W-A-R-D. Uh, a bunch of other places, it's probably the same thing. So that's, <laughs> Some combination of Miles and Ward and we'll find you. <laughs> yeah. There's one guy who's like nine, 10 years younger than me in the UK, and he is permanently screwed on the internet because I'm really good at this internet thing. <laughs> you can get any of his usernames anywhere, right? It's just a hatred piece. He should just change his name. Yeah. <laughs> or, or get really comfortable with strange handles online. Yeah. He'll, he'll, it'll probably be easier for him to just change the name. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you again so much. And, and this is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast. For more ideas and insights, please go check us out at www.conciliateam.com. And we do. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much.